everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of SMG Tutorial Tuesdays. So I hope you guys are digging this series. If you do, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified when they come out. Here's a hint to all you bass players out there. They come out on Tuesdays. Anyway, so today I want to show you guys a real neat trick on metal guitars that uh, was taught to me by my friend Chad Kelly, who of course stole it from Andy Sneap like we do with most of modern metal recording techniques. This one's a little different. This one took me a minute to get my head around. I'm like, we could do this? Really? This works? And this all centers around using a Pultec style passive EQ on metal guitars in the post-processing phase. Now, you guys remember this thing. This is the video I, you know, this is from the video I did, the greatest metal guitar tone I ever got in my life, which was by accident by using that OC818 mic. And we got this. Yeah, played that for Eric Arco, who played the guitars on that. He was just like, holy shit, man. And, you know, played it for Jackson Ward and and, and Alex Nazel. Everyone's like, damn, those guitars are insane. So first and foremost, we're using, of course, the OC818 with its incredible Polar Designer software. And, you know, we got a front mic and a back mic. So that's front element by itself. Bring in that rear element and it just oh, it does something so amazing. And uh, don't forget, you can grab the Austrian Audio Polar Designer for absolutely free. It's open source. It's fucking cool. Now, that's that's part of the equation right there. The other part is a lot of EQing in the top end and bottom end, um, a little bit of C4, that kind of thing. And um, in my case, a little stereo widening uh, with the PSP Infinity Strip, actually. Did I use that? Yes, I did. Like, Put this on. Turn this off. Wow. Yeah, I forgot that. The, the great thing about the PSP Infinity Strip is the Master Control has a little stereo width control. Like, like, let's hear this in the mix. I'll punch this in and out. It's pretty damn cool. just gives it that left and I don't even have any EQ going on there. Um, I've got a little bit of the reek EQ going on and there's a lot going on, you know, in the top and bottom the whole reason there is explained in depth in Scott Elliott's guitar tone mastery course. And he kind of teaches you his whole system of what to look for, what to listen for and how to apply it to your own recordings. If you haven't got a copy of guitar tone mastery yet, and you record metal guitar at home, especially if you're doing amp sims, that kind of thing, this is the course you need. Anyway, uh, link to that in the description below, but more on this in a second. And this is something I kind of came across thanks to Chad Kelly, inventor of the Signal Art reamp boxes, which are just absolutely stellar. I, I absolutely love these things to death. He sent me a couple of reamp boxes there a couple weeks back, brand new one, and then he had one called the Angry Reamp. And I'm like, what's this all about? And he's like, oh, it's, well, it's that 30 hertz Andy Sneap trick. And I'm like, what the hell is that all about? And the whole idea here is you pull up a Pultec style EQ and put it on your guitar bus. In this case, we've got, you know, eight guitar channels going to this fader right here. If we look on the side here, you can see all these mic, front mic, back mic. Okay. All those are going right to the guitar bus and are controlled by one simple fader. So what we're doing is we're adding a, a, a Pultec style EQ to the subsonic frequencies. And this gets really interesting on metal guitar. We, we punch this out. This is what the effect off. Watch what happens when we hit it here. Now, it might be getting a little bit saturated there because the way how this circuit works. If we pull this back to like 3 dBs, that's very clean. Uh, 
Now, this is the thing. I've got an IGS rubber bands mastering equalizer that's basically a stepped Pultec in solid state, and it is absolutely phenomenal. That's back home in Windsor, but I've been using that on a couple of mixes and just absolutely loving the the whole idea. And this is the trick here. What we're doing is we're boosting at 30 hertz and cutting at 30 hertz at the same time so we get this weird boost wedge cut thing. And it's while well, we're boosting at 30 Hertz because we hit the cut as well. And because they don't quite hit the same frequencies the right way, everything above 30 Hertz gets notched down a little bit. And the guitars winds up getting cleaned up a little bit. I've also got a healthy boost at 16 kilohertz, like really, you know, way past the fizz region. Cause this, this is a very gentle and passive EQ curve. We can get away with cranking this up and it's very smooth. Like we take this up. just enough to make it interesting without being super hairy and again i go back to the whole scott's guitar tone mastery course for really what to listen for there anyway so we got all this happening and that's that's what the waves puig tech i've also got the tube tech by soft soft tube and this thing at harmony we actually had some real tube tech pull techs in the in the rack and if you guys ever listen to that like a fujin uh cover that i did with trey watson and eric arco we we had that eq going on all over the drums actually killer stuff so we're gonna punch this out and this one's a little bit cleaner it's a little less raunchy sounding but it's still it, it really does have that desired effect we, we turn this on punch it out This one to me seems to sound, sound like it has a little bit of more headroom before it gets a little little too gnarly sounding on the guitars. So I'm going to take you guys through this and show you exactly what's going on. We're going to... So what we want to do is we want to hit the low frequency. We're not even going to bother with, with this part down here. Can we just turn that off? Yeah, that's off. Okay, great. We're just going to hit 30 hertz here. We're not going to touch any of these frequencies. We're going to... Except for this, we're going to put the, the boost at 16 kilohertz. And we're going to take it up to six, six, and six. Watch what happens. Now that's what the bottom end boosted and cut at the same time. I know it sounds weird and it's totally counterintuitive, but if you actually read the charts of what a Pultec does, it makes sense. So we got that going on. That's off. What it's actually doing is it's adding some harmonic overtones in the low frequencies, you know, in the spectrum that we can hear. Like 30 hertz is really fucking low. Like human spectral hearing is supposed to end at 40 hertz. So we're actually doing a little bit of boosting below that. And because we're adding the attenuation, it's adding some interesting harmonic overtones in something we can hear. And the effect only gets more pronounced as we crank it up more, even more. Off. On. So in effect, we're adding a little bit of extra texture in, in, the, uh, in the lower mids, but we're also thinning out the sound a little bit, which is really bizarre. That's what the boosted all the way. And then cut. Put that in the mix. Now, I know a few of you guys are like, oh, what's up with that snare? Well, if you're ever a, sound, a fan of the Black Album snare, that was one of my all-time favorite snare drums. That's the closest I've ever come to getting that sound. I'm really happy with that result. I'm going to do a full episode on that. Just make sure I got my verb working correctly. Oh, hang on. There we go. Yep. So, yeah, absolutely love that rhythm tone. And that's with the Tube Tech. And we are getting a slightly different flavor. We go from Tube Tech to, to the Waves version, which is the Puig Tech. Let's, let's just uh, 
solo up the guitars here. Take a listen to the two different ones. That's a little less clean. That's a little bit snarlier. And it's apparently it's modeled after Jack's personal um, Pultec EQ. So, hey, you know what? Cool. Of course, yeah, we didn't put the boost on, on, the, uh, on the Tube Tech one yet, did we? So what I like to do is add a bit of 16 kilohertz. This is after we've already rolled off a lot of the top, just to bring the air back, but not to the point where it's irritating. <laughs> Pretty sweet. And again, we'll go back to the pull tech here, or the Puig tech. Turn that off. We're going to just compare the two. Let's let's turn on the Puig tech, and then we're going to go to the tube tech, and then back to the Puig tech, and back and forth. It's a little hairy. That's really got something cool going on in the bottom end. Now, notice I had to pull the gain back on this because if we zero this out, it gets a little bit hypersaturated. Okay, hopefully that didn't crap out. This one, this one definitely wants a little bit more headroom, so we'll pull this back a bit. Take a listen. I like that. That's super cool. Try that back in the mix here. Of course, mind you, I'm, I'm still getting my feet wet with, with mixing on headphones, so hopefully everything sounds reasonably balanced here. Um, hopefully I haven't screwed anything up too badly. All right, now, the big question is, I'm sure a lot of you guys have is, but Glenn, do, is there a freeware version of that? Yes, yes, there is. It doesn't quite function the same way, I find, but this is from uh, the guys who did Ignite Emissary. It's a very cool freeware plugin. This one, I find I have to boost a little bit harder to get it to react the same way. We're going to take this EQ out, and we're going to take this EQ out. We're just going to focus on this middle section here. This is called the PTEQX, and I think you can find this on um, KVR and a couple other uh, different free plugin sites. Uh, I'll have some links in the description, of course. Same kind of idea. You can get that raunchy bottom end thing going on, but you got to hit this one a little bit differently. It's not quite as even. It's not quite as precise. Again, I'm at 30 hertz, boosting up. And 16 hertz boost as well. This one seems a little bit more aggressive with the boost in the top. But for the low, low price of absolutely free, I think that's pretty damn cool. Again, let's go back uh, to the Puig Tech just, just for a quick listen here um, and, and just listen to them solo it up. I like that a lot. And then we go back here. That one definitely has a lot more headroom, no question about it. So it's not getting as... as uh, coagulated that's i guess that's the word i'm looking for as, as much as the puig tech is that's for sure okay. 
Not bad, though. That's actually pretty damn cool. And again, uh, you know, I've been using this on not just on this mix. I've been using it on other mixes as well. You know, I was using it on that uh, kind of men in the box type song uh, Eric and Jackson did a while back. Same kind of thing with the OC818. We got that going on right here as well. Make a couple adjustments here. Cool. All right, so that's my my 30 hertz Pultec trick. So just remember, if you got one in like one of your plug-in suites, try it out. If not, go check out the freeware version. It's pretty damn neat. Try it on your guitars. Remember, 30 hertz, boost, and cut, and try it out. See how it works for you. Anyway, that's Tutorial Tuesdays. If you guys like the show, please let me know because I want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment if you got episode suggestions, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm always got my ears open for that kind of thing. So I'm into checking out plugins, just showing cool little mix techniques, that kind of thing. But I would definitely recommend this. And of course, if you really want to get your head around working with metal guitar tones, I'd recommend you check out my course, Total Heavy Guitar, or Scott Elliott's course, Guitar Tone Mastery, which is focused towards amp sims and impulse responses and all that cool stuff you'll definitely get your head around eqing guitars and working with them much more effectively to get them to work in your mixes better and get the kind of mixes you're after of course i'll have a link to that in the description as well now the other cool thing we're going to be doing with this series is we're going to be making the multi-tracks available for download for absolutely free so if you want to grab those there's a link in the description below and if you're a Reaper user, I'm also including the Reaper project file so you can take this mix, deconstruct it, and see what you like, what you don't like, how you would do things differently, all that good stuff. And of course, if you're a Reaper user and you still haven't quite got your head around what I'm doing here and you need to grasp a little bit more of the fundamentals, grab Adam Steele's Ultimate Reaper Guide. He'll take you through the entire process from setup to tracking a song to mixing to mastering. It's only 97 bucks and it is absolutely phenomenal. If you're a Reaper guy and you haven't got it yet and you don't know what you're doing, it's the course designed exactly for you. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, all that good stuff, and I will keep this series coming. And until next time, praise Krum and crush your enemies.